Hey, YouTube fam, what's going on? So this is video number three, I guess, on this uh, implicit audio cabinet build. So it's all done, the glue set. I just uh, finished putting on the second coat of stain. So I decided to go with a walnut brown. It's kind of uh, it's kind of cool because it really brings out the grain of the cabinet. Like really nice grain work on this cabinet. It's amazing. And uh, so, um, so yeah. Yeah, just, uh, you know, and I did the inside of the cabinet too, just, just so that it's kind of uniform and, uh, and the extra pieces as well. Um, so this was the original color. I didn't do the baffle, but cause I was thinking it's going to be wrapped in, uh, it's going to be wrapped in grill cloth, right? But, but I'm thinking, you know what, maybe I, I think I'll do it anyway, cause you might see it through the grill cloth depending, you know, how thick a stuff that uh, I end up getting. So I guess I'll I'll do this, and uh, I got all my uh, hardware like ready to install, and so this this plug that comes with the kit, I um, I had this great big heavy duty speaker cord at the house, and uh, it only had one of these prongs on it, but I found another one in like a junk box, so I you know did some soldering there and some taping up, so this is like super well insulated, so that should work well. So that's ready to go. That just pops in here. And again, it's perfectly routed. It just sits right in there, nice and flush, right? You can't even can't even see it. So that's fantastic and that's going to be up in the back corner of the cab uh, or the upper corner of the cab, I guess, like that, like so. So um oh, like I showed you yesterday, I guess when we did the dry fit. And uh yeah, it should be good. Um Couple little things if you're gonna build a cab and stain it, make sure that you wipe off and maybe use water to get the glue off. Because if you can see up here, like there was glue that squeezed out of the seam when I put the cabinet together. But uh and I wiped it off, like I totally wiped it off. But the any residue of glue, I guess, just seals the fibers of the wood and the stain just won't penetrate it. Like, so it's still kind of a light color up here on the edge, but that's fine. It looks kind of, kind of vintage-y, <laughs> so I'm okay with that. It's pretty good. Um, yesterday, you know, I looked at these pieces and I was telling you that, uh, so they use uh, nine-ply Baltic birch plywood for their cabs, um, and that was semi-incorrect. So the nine-ply is for these back pieces, um, this... Um, speaker cloth baffle and the speaker baffle but the actual cab and the framing around the cab is all 13 ply void free uh birch plywood so yeah there's a there's a lot of uh there's a lot of plies there <laughs> so yeah it's pretty cool and uh and i could have i guess i could have maybe you know capped off the edge with uh, that you know birch uh the tape that you can get and iron on but I kind of like the look of all the plies and you can really see what the cabinet's made with. So, and, and I might cover it up eventually, but anyway. So, so that's it. So all we got to do now is, um, I'm going to give it a clear coat just to protect the stain. And, um, I'll put these legs on and, uh, you know, the speaker and wire it all up and we'll do a little sound clip. So when we come back, we'll be ready to rock and roll and see what this cabinet sounds like. Um, so I guess that's it. So yeah, that was um, a, a nice little cab build, right? It was all pre-cut by this company that I found on Reverb. They're called Implicit Audio and uh, reached out to them. They were super nice. They helped me out. And one thing um, I just kind of noticed today as I was cleaning up my mess, one thing, and I don't know if they do this on purpose or if it's just, um, just a fluke or coincidence, but so, you know, it's just getting ready to throw all this stuff out but they have they don't use any plastic well sometimes you buy stuff and like the screws are in a plastic bag and then and then your part is in a plastic bag and then and everything is they got plastic bags like those air plastic bags to like insulate everything and or to protect everything and it's just plastic 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 and then you got to get rid of that and you are know, we're hurting our environment as it is these guys there's nothing, no plastic. Everything is 100% recyclable. The only thing that they had in here was this piece of foam to kind of protect the cabinet. And, uh, and this is the good stuff. It's not the flaky stuff. So 
So this I'm keeping, you know, as a uh, repurpose. I can always use foam when I'm, you know, customizing cases to carry some guitar stuff around or, or guitar parts or tools or whatever. So, so that's good. That's a keeper. But the rest is just cardboard. And even all the hardware was in a paper envelope. So I thought that was, that was kind of pretty cool, you know, being at a Canadian product and, you know, we want to kind of help our environment as much as we can. So, so another, you know, if, if that stuff is important to you, that's another bonus. I, know, I thought, I thought that was pretty neat, you know, that there was no plastic in the packaging whatsoever, other than maybe the tape on the seams of the box, right? So anyway. All right, well, I'm going to give a clear coat to this thing and uh, maybe give some stain on this. And when we come back, we'll do the cabinet assembly, pop the speaker in, and give it a little whirl and see what it sounds like. Take care, guys. All right, so the cabinet's ready. I gave it three coats of clear, uh, just a satin finish, so you can barely tell it's there. Um, I started assembling some of the parts. Um, so I, I, got the, I got the plug. Uh, in the rear piece, and that's already connected to the speaker. Uh, I got, I put the handle on. I just wanted to see how everything lines up, and you know what? It lines up perfectly. Everything is good. The only issue I have with this handle, like it's a great handle, nice and thick and comfortable, but the, the brackets here, they're kind of like a, I don't know, they're kind of like a rainbow shaped brackets. You know, they go, they're, they're flat and then they go up and over. I find they're not quite tall enough for the thickness of the handle down here. And it's really, it's, it's really kind of hard to get it, you know, into the lifting position. Like it rubs on the actual cabinet and to get it back down, like you gotta, you gotta apply some force, but I, it might, I mean, it might work itself in too. I don't know. Um, but you can see here that there's no clearance between the bottom of the the rubber and the top of the cab. Other than that, um, as far as lining up and threading in, like the, these are bang on. And the screw lengths are perfect, the ones that come with the kit. You don't have to worry about the screws sticking out below your cabinet. You can see up there, they're just recessed in the T-nuts there. Um, they're good, they're just, they're there, but they're not gonna interfere with your speaker. So once you, you know, if you get these kits, uh, it's really nothing to do like you don't have to do anything except just assemble it and uh, you know use a little common sense the only thing I did uh, to get ready to install this these back pieces is um, so these back pieces were already drilled so um, but the back of the cab where these wooden pieces are those are not drilled to receive the screws and I guess they're plywood so it wouldn't matter anyway but I just put some um, little pieces of cardboard around the edges here uh, just to space out these like this piece because if I ever want to tolex it like I don't want it tight down here right so I, I left like a oh it's about probably a sixteenth of an inch space all the way around and then I, I punch the holes with a little punch and uh, uh, and then I drilled them. So I just I just drilled a tiny little pilot hole just to, so I can get started and not have to worry about anything splitting. So so yeah. So I'm gonna and then for a speaker we're putting in a Jensen P10R. Uh, you guys have seen my videos on these. Uh, love these things. Uh, they're kind of a vintage style with the square kind of magnet at the back. So. Um, yeah, so that's going in. So I'm gonna finish assembling it. I'll put the legs on the bottom of the cab and uh, it's, we'll do a, a, a sound test. All right, there you have it. Completely built cab. That took all of five minutes to assemble. Like super easy, everything lines up perfectly. Not a single issue whatsoever. Um, these uh, speaker screws are a little long for my taste. I, I feel that they didn't have to be that long. However, once you put the grill cloth on this, the thickness of the baffle board is uh, is gonna go over that and those are not gonna be in contact. If you can see here, there's still a good quarter inch of, of uh, thickness of the baffle board um, to like, uh, so that these screws aren't gonna be touching the grill cloth. So that's not really an issue, but uh, they didn't have to be that long. Um, but again, uh, Perfectly lined up. Everything was good. Um, sitting around back here. Here, I'll just turn the cab because the door is open in the in the shop here. So that's what the back looks like. Uh, and there's the Jensen speaker. Uh, get some sun. There we go. 
it's mounted in there, perfect. No issues whatsoever with this whole project. Um, very, very nice stuff, I'm super impressed. Now the only thing is, will the cab sound as good as, you know, as it was to put together and as good as it looks? I mean, I'm not a woodworker, Clearly, I didn't do a great job. It's not a, oh my God, look at that cab. Like it's, it's just something I wanted for an extension cabinet or to power my little quilter amp. Um, so, you know, I didn't do a, a beautiful job and that wasn't my intention to make it look like a, a million dollar cabinet. Um, it is what it is. It's a 10 inch cab, solid birch, and it should sound awesome, but we're going to find out. So uh, join me in a few minutes uh, with the sound clip. All right, we have now moved inside. Um, so there's a cab. I have it hooked up to, as you can see right there, I have it hooked up to my little quilter super block. Uh, it's on standby right now. I'm just on normal channel, got a little bit of gain, a um, little bit of bass, a little bit of mids, you know, whatever. Uh, pretty much straight, and then I'm just gonna use the, my uh, inexpensive Ert Telly, and um, yeah, we're gonna try and see what that sounds like. So, just don't know the best place to put this phone for uh, so that you guys can hear the actual speaker. So let me just pause this, and I'll try and figure this out. Be right back. Okay, hopefully that'll work. I got the camera about two feet from the speaker cab. So it shouldn't distort the microphone and the camera, uh, but hopefully you'll hear what I'm hearing in the room. So, all right, here we go. This is just a uh, bridge pickup. <laughs> My 110 cab build, um, and I got that from Implicit Audio, their company in Ontario. Uh, the guys there don't know me from Adam, really, um, but they, you know, they they gave me a good deal, and uh, they they wanted to work with me. So I'm sure if you guys are interested interested in a in a cab and you want to kind of customize it and build your own and not just buy 
something online. You know, I find the prices are similar. I was shopping around for a 110 cab and uh, there, anything decent is between two and $300. Um, most of that comes with a speaker that I wouldn't want in my cab anyway. So, um, and then I found that, uh, I found that um, when you look at the specs, most of these cabs are not built with, with uh, like birch plywood or real plywood. It's all like that, uh, you know, glued sawdust kind of stuff, the MDF. So I, I kind of didn't want to spend that kind of money on that. So when I had the opportunity to buy a real, you know, void free birch plywood cab, and then I could assemble it myself and kind of finish it myself, that was kind of cool. And I think without the deal that they gave me, uh, they gave me like a slight discount or whatever. I won't, I won't talk numbers because they may not do for someone else what they did for me, or they might give someone else a, a, a better deal or, or, you know, or maybe, maybe some people are sponsored by them and they get their cabinets for free. Like I have no idea. Right. So I just, I just know that they were really good to, uh, to deal with me because, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a nobody really. And, um, um, but I, I like the fact, you know, it was about 200 and I think 205 bucks or 215 bucks. So really, if I was to go to the store, like the hardware store and buy the materials and buy the T-nuts and buy all the screws and then get, you know, get the glue, which I had to get anyway, and then, and then buy a handle and buy the four legs and, and buy the, uh, you know, the little connector and then, and then get a router and route that out to make it all fit. And then like, geez, I'd be into it for way more than 200 bucks, I think. But anyway, so for me, it was great. So I'll be gigging with that thing uh, this weekend and I'll be gigging with the quilter because I want to test it out in a live situation and uh, it should be a lot of fun. So I've decided that I'm going to go with a black grill cloth. I think it'll just bring out the cab and uh, I don't want anything kind of weird, nothing fancy. I want that kind of vintage looking um, look. So I think, uh, I think that'll be the way to go. So thanks a lot guys for, um, for uh, checking out my video. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, if you have one of these cabinets or you have a cabinet by Implicit Audio, let me know how it's held up and how you guys found it, um, putting it together and how you find it tonally. And uh, to the guys that I'm at Implicit Audio, thanks a lot uh, from uh, this uh, little uh, islander here in the East Coast. <laughs> Much appreciated. I've been looking for a cab for a long time and this really fits the bill and it was a lot of fun. So thanks a lot. You guys take care. God bless and uh, hope to... See you soon.